in this episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. We speak with Joel Amick, who built his very own personal helicopter. Joel Amick, uh, I'm out of uh, 14 Alpha Lake Norman Air Park in Mooresville, North Carolina. Uh, and this is my Rotorway 162 Turbo. Uh, we just finished building it uh, in June and got the hours flown off of it for the FAA uh, requirements. And we're here at uh, Bob St. Dennis's Florida Fly-In to meet with everybody in the Rotorway community and uh, have some good time. All right, Joel, so you said you've been into this for about a year. You were a fixed-wing pilot and decided for a new challenge. Yeah. Tell, yeah, me, tell a, me how that, that came to happen. Well, uh, I was like you said, I was a fixed-wing pilot. had about 250 hours, um, you know, Cessna, Pipers. Um, I wanted a new challenge. Uh, I could either do uh, instrument rating, uh, but I never really imagined myself flying in those kind of conditions, or I could find something different. And so I started talking to a few people around the... Uh, our local EAA chapter, EAA 309, and uh, came across John Garabedian, uh, and he was an avid helicopter pilot. He's got a Bell 47. I think you interviewed him uh, when he had a rotor way, and uh, he took me up in the 47, and that was pretty much it. I was hooked. Um, I wanted to get into helicopters, learn how to fly them. Uh, to me, it was just uh, it's like magic almost of, of how they flew, and you can control them, and, and what they can do as compared to what a fixed wing aircraft can do. So you got this uh, as a kit that's already started or a, a fresh leftover that, that was uh, from Rotaway? Yeah, so this was actually a, a gentleman out in Arizona had it, and uh, I guess for health reasons, he wasn't going to be able to complete it. Um, he hadn't really done all that much to it. Uh, none of the interior was really done. All he'd really done is hung some of the body panels, and uh, so me and John um, decided that that would be a good ship for us to start with uh, as a build. Um, I had one that I had bought running that I did my training in and um, so while I was still using that ship we started building this one and we were able to put some really nice modifications into this uh, to make it really special for us. So. And, and you purchased this about a year ago and it took you a year to finish it? Uh, we, we got it, uh, we purchased it and got it back to the hangar in November of last year and it took us about six months of really hard constant work uh, to get it up and running and FAA worthiness gone through and all the kinks out of it, all the bugs out of it. Uh, that, that's, that's still a fairly quick build, I, I would very think, much. for uh, any kits. Yes. Um, yeah, it's a um, it's very quick build. Uh, usually it takes about 400 hours with one person doing it. Um, so, yeah, me and John were every night was just banging out more and more and more and more on it. So, uh, yeah, it was and, a very and, quick build. And what is the price point on one of these kits new compared to maybe the used market? What did, what did you pick this up for? Sure. So, uh, well, this one was on, wasn't finished, but uh, a turbo model like this, a 162, uh, if it's running and, and in good shape, you could expect um, anywhere from... 85 to 105,000. Uh, the new kits, just the kits themselves, are 98,000. Uh, and then you're looking at another 400 hours to put it together or pay somebody to, to help you with it. Um, that's probably another 30 or 40 thousand um, dollars. The newer uh, ships like the Talons, you're probably looking at 120, 120, 150 thousand um, dollars. Compare that to like an R22 that's Three hundred thousand dollars to four hundred thousand dollars new, and you know two hundred thousand uh, in the in the used market. Uh, it's a pretty good uh, it's a pretty good price point. Hey guys, one second. Hey guys, you've probably seen me traveling a whole lot these days. What makes all this possible, getting this original aviation content, is sponsors like these. 
Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Airworks at AirWorksAviation.com. Aviation at AviationUSA.com. Check the description below for links to these great companies. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. I'm not as versed with uh, the rotor craft here, but uh, as far as the build process, what was the funnest part and the most challenging part? Uh, the, the funnest part was doing those little things that, that make yours you know, special. Like in our ship, uh, we glassed in both sides, uh, the sides on it. So most ships will have a, a division, division here and you can take the bottom or the top panel off. Um, we ended up glassing those together so it's all nice one solid panel. Um, we did a lot of uh, little things like these rings and cups for, um, for the control for the front and the back. I uh, did a lot of powder coating for the gauges, um, cluster and the, and the foot wells and, and things like that. Um, we did a lot of stuff on the inside uh, that made it really nice, uh, made it easier to work on, uh, easier to maintain. Um, that was certainly the funnest part. Um, my friend Stephanie Bell helped with the, uh, the graphics design uh, and, and put that together. And we um, you know, had a local graphics company uh, put the vinyl on it after we had it painted. Um, you know, doing the, the blades, everybody's got different uh, kind of blades that they do. Um, the hardest part, uh, it's like any, any mechanical thing, is, you know, if something's supposed to fit and it doesn't, what do you do? Um, so there was a little bit of that. There's a little bit of, of stuff that you have to build yourself or modify um, to, to make everything fit together right. Uh, fitting the body panels is always a challenge because if you move one thing on the left side, it screws up something on the right side and, and trying to get all that stuff dialed in is, uh, is always a challenge. But well, the basic frame is a pre-welded Yes. Tubular frame, correct? Yeah, so the engine comes fully assembled, the frame comes fully assembled and, and, and welded together. You've got to put the rotor system together and you've got to do the blades and well, you have to build 51% uh, for the FAA's requirement for an experimental home build. You, ac yeah. you actually have to build the blades? Uh, the blades come like uh, kind of in a raw state and you've got to fine tune them and you've got to put the ends on them and um, you know make sure the blade straps and all those are secured and those are put on correctly so yeah it's uh, you, you've got to do a bit but they've got it pretty much right at 51 percent um, rotorways kits they it's really great the way they come because they all come in a card uh, a big cardboard card and it has a number on it it's like e205 631 and if you look in the book it says look on card e 25601 get part x and put it in slot y um, rotorways kits are very easy builds uh, as far as building these type of things go so is there plans and assembly manual together or yes. just the assembly manual uh there there's uh just the assembly manual really um but you can get the plans on their website and uh and everything's pretty available uh the, one of the reasons i wanted to go with rotorway was really the community um all of the other experimental helicopter um, they didn't have the community support that rotorway did and to me that was the most important thing because if you run into a problem you know yeah you can call the factory and you maybe you get somebody to call you back but with this community i can reach out to three or four people and they're like oh yeah you know we had that happen on so and so ship you do x y and z and it'll take care of that so So is this your first, I'll call Bob's fly-in here in uh, Cannon Creek in 
in uh, Lake City? Uh, actually, this is my second. Uh, okay. My first time here, I was with in my other ship that I'd bought for training, and this is actually where I got my solo endorsement done uh, from my instructor, Joe Perillo. Um, he actually, I was able to get signed off here and did my uh, three takeoffs and three landings on this very field. So this uh, this field is very special to me. Have you been to other gatherings like this, or do you, are there other gatherings that happen for Rotorway across the country? Uh, yeah, there's two major ones that happen for, for Rotorway. Uh, obviously, Bob's here. Uh, Jim Hardy, who has a ship down here, he has one in Texas. Um, it's kind of the, the middle of the country one. Uh, it's pretty big, it's huge. Um, Jim has this, uh, the Red River Run. Uh, it's an incredible trip, actually. The, the sole reason I took my ship to Jim's uh, fly-in uh, last time was to go down that Red River Run, and then I ended up selling the ship that I was training in because we were building this one. And that's a question for, I've heard this a lot, do you primarily call these helicopters ships? Is that kind of the, yeah, the standard you know, of uh, ownership? I, funny you should mention that. We were talking about that last night, and yeah, I do. I call them ships um, as, as well as a lot of people. I, th I think it just kind of comes from, you know, everything in aviation was kind of maritime based at one time, and um, ships are more of a general term. Um, you can talk about a fixed wing craft or a rotor craft, and, but they're all ships uh, okay. in, that, in that regard. Well, thanks for giving us a tour around your ship today. No, no thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, well in case you didn't get the press release, don't worry, we didn't either. Rotorway has a new name and a new owner. Introducing Rotor X. Based out of Chandler, Arizona, they will continue to provide parts and support for the Rotorway fleet while selling their new kits. Along with a new kit, Rotor X features a new price tag of $112,000. Check out their newly updated website for more details on this experimental rotorcraft. And be on the lookout for future episodes here from this rotorway gathering we visited at the Cannon Creek Air Park. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to check out our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com. We have merchandise. Check it out. Support the channel, like, subscribe, and click that bell so you don't miss a single episode.